don't fall on your knees, you better repent and serve the one true God. Because there is only one God. Only one Jehovah. There is no other God beside the God. Amen. I think this air in Australia has done something to me. I'm going to serve some more of that. Amen. The survival of today's church will depend on how supernatural it becomes. Yes. 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 The survival in today's hostile climate of aggressive terminal forces that are hostile towards the church today will depend on the survivability of the church in the future. Yes. If you're not supernatural, you will die. Yes. Your churches will be buried. Your churches will disappear will be eradicated because you serve no useful purpose to God. Yes. I make no apologies for making that statement. Mm -hmm. If you are plain church, religious church, traditional church, legalistic church, then if you're not supernatural, you will disappear over the landscape of the spiritual culture of this nation. Amen. 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 Naturally, you cannot change anything, not even yourself, without supernatural intervention. No. Can you change by yourself? No. Can you change by yourself? No. How many people can change themselves just by their own intervention? No one. No. Without supernatural intervention, you can change absolutely nothing. What the supernatural powers that affects transformation, you need the power of God. The church needs the power of God. Amen. Preaching the truth. Amen. Did you know preaching the truth will offend Modern day theology. Yes. yes. Preaching the truth of the supernatural will offend the traditional church. Yeah. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Am I upsetting somebody here? If you are a traditional church and you're not supernatural, it's an offense to God. Because God created the world out of supernatural ministry. Oh, Hallelujah. Let me go on. I want, to, I, want to, I want to finish this. Hallelujah. The supernatural will incite conflict amongst the unconformable powers of resistance that are anti Christ and anti power. The supernatural targets carnal Christianity, lukewarm Christians who have no concept of the supernatural. That's what you see today. The more the church departs from God's supernatural power, the more antichrist spirit will come into the church and then introduce replacements. Replacements substitute for the supernatural. Worship has been replaced with entertainment, showcasing God's so showcasing showmanship. I'm not interested how well you move when you play the guitar. I don't care how many supernatural riffs you can perform on the guitar. I don't care if you pulse around like Elvis Presley. I don't care how many hip swivels you do. If you're not supernatural, you will never be moved. Amen. Amen. You can rock, shake, rattle and roll, my brother. But you'll never go anywhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So worship has been replaced with entertainment, showcasing showmanship, and sadly, some churches in my nation, and presumably in yours, are becoming more appealing to the contemporary secular world of music. And they're losing the supernatural identity that brings worship to glorify God and Amen. not man. Amen. Amen. Reason has replaced faith. We try to reason with God. Oh God, why are we doing this? Why do we have why do we have to go down this path? We try to out reason God. We try to negotiate with God. Oh really do you want me to go down there? Do you want me to do this? We try to reason God and out reason God so that God submits and says, Oh, I give up, just do what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired of hearing your complaints. I've tolerated you long enough. We try to reason with God. Education has replaced biblical wisdom and regulatory knowledge. There's nothing wrong with education. We all need to be educated. Education in its right context 
is good. We need to be educated in order to qualify for secular employment and other job pursuits and other working activities. There's nothing wrong with education, but when education replaces the model of the supernatural, then it is an error. Programs and agendas have substituted and overtaken sovereign moves of God. Counseling, psychiatry and psychology replace healing and deliverance. Yeah. How many times have I seen the altars of my church filled with people who are dealing with mental health issues? I've never experienced it in all my years. People are coming, young children, young women, young children, in their teens, dealing with suicidal thoughts. They're dealing with drug addiction. They're dealing with glue sniffing and methamphetamine drug abuse. They're dealing with, with lethal drug concoctions. They're shooting up in the street because they want a high, because the church can't produce a supernatural high. Amen. Amen. They come to the church to seek agendas, to seek solutions. But where is the solution? They find it in a bottle. They find it in a drug, a vial. They find it in an addictive lifestyle. And then Satan says, I'm ready to take you now. I'm ready. I want your spirit. I want your soul. I want to take you to hell. How do I know that? Simply. Because I've dealt with it. One man in ACDC, super, you know, he's super idol to many people who idolise that music. Wrote the song the Highway to Hell. Yeah. Yeah. On the Highway to Hell. Yeah, he went to hell all right at the age of 28 from a drug overdose. Mm. Don't be a statistic. Don't be a casualty. Young people, teenagers in this gathering, your life is valuable to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't give your life over in submission, surrender to Satan, to Lucifer, to Luciferian affliction and torment. Your life is not in a bottle, my sister and my brother. Your life Amen. is in the spirit. Amen. 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 The occult, witchcraft, have substituted for the supernatural power of God. The obsessions with the paranormal. The obsessions with occult. Our TV screens are riddled with supernatural paranormal activity. Um, occult through Dracula and, and vampirism. Twilight, you, well, you name it. Let's watch a good Twilight episode. Oh, vampires, werewolves, horror, murder, sexual, graphic displays of images that should be confined to the marital bedroom on my TV screen. And I have to be supernatural. I have to practice a supernatural lifestyle, but I ingest sights of graphic imagery that is not supernatural in origin. And then I go to church and worship God. Hallelujah, bless me, Lord. Hallelujah, supernaturally empower me with your spirit, Lord. No, you just watched something that's affected your spirit and is going to take you some impartation and deliverance to get rid of. <coughs> Don't ingest the devil's supernatural. So let's conclude, shall we? They are, there are so many replacements because they have removed the power. Hallelujah. The moment you compromise the truth, the Holy Spirit will lift his presence from the church. The moment the church rejects the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lift and withdraw his presence. So we conclude then that we have a Christianity in crisis. Yes. Why? Because without the supernatural power of God, we are unable to supply the needs of humanity or adequately, sufficiently respond as a legitimate presence to counteract and replace the abnormal preoccupation the world has with paranormal, supernatural. You see people going to psychics. 
gifts. You see people seeking counterfeit measures of the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the site. Let's read the astrological site. Let's read my horoscope. Let's deal with star constellation systems. Maybe my future is tied up in the astrological way the stars align with each other. I used to read horoscopes when I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't married at that time, and I was searching for my bride <laughs> out of a horoscope. <laughs> I just wanted to know if a fair maiden was going to ride on a white horse and a white stallion and carry off to a palace somewhere. All I wanted was something. And I searched the stars. And it had my palms ready numerology, a preoccupation of things that were paranormal were strong. That's what the world says is their gospel. Their gospel is the occult. Their gospel is the devil's gospel, Satan's gospel. And they read that religiously every day. They don't start their day without reading what the stars say. Do you want the supernatural? Yes. yes. That's true, sir. The church has been called to demonstrate the gospel with power. Yes. There is no power unless you demonstrate it. God never purposed for this gospel to be demonstrated without power. Every word is an orchestration of compelling power. So the challenge is to access higher planes of supernatural thought. Mm. The supernatural realities navigate through supernatural realities to explore and take possession of uncharted territories, to conquer the spiritual landscape and study the spiritual architecture of supernatural realms, to open the heavens over nations, towns and cities, to enter into unfamiliar spiritual definite dimensions. Do you want that? Yes. Do you want to experience yes. that? Because the supernatural is the na spiritual nature of God Himself. God doesn't depend on the natural realm, which consists of time, space, and matter in order to exist. He exists in a kingdom that is both eternal and supernatural. The word supernatural is derived from the prefix super, which means over and above. Therefore, to live in the supernatural means to live above, beyond, or outside of the natural realm. God is not subjective to natural laws. All the natural laws on earth are subjugated to God and come under His jurisdiction and control. So the supernatural supersedes above all natural law and science. To separate God from the supernatural is to attempt to reduce God down to the level of the natural man. To naturalize God. God is not finite. He is infinite. He does not possess the finite ability of man. God is self-existent, meaning he has life in and of himself and is the creator of all things. The supernatural is the nature of God's kingdom. Just as God cannot be described outside the context of the supernatural, the same is true of his kingdom. God is Lord over both the spiritual and physical dimensions. He created the visible world and the kingdoms of the earth to be ruled over by the supernatural and visible realm. So the supernatural is, carries the design, the impact and influence of the spiritual world on our physical creation. So if you're not being impacted, if you're not being transformed, if you're not feeling the influence of the supernatural, then you need to uncover what it is that you need to go and pursue the supernatural because the supernatural is ready to be released. The supernatural is ready to carry you into apprehending and um, arresting the supernatural design that brings lasting impact and influence on your life. So all healings, miracles, signs and wonders, the casting out of demons, the raising of the dead, are all demonstrations of his power that reflect his rule in our natural world. Did you know that the supernatural is God's normal? Yeah. Amen. The supernatural is normal to God. Amen. How normal is it to you? Yeah. Are you operating God's normal or your own? Your natural normal. God normal is to do things supernatural. Yeah. That's what he does. So from God's perspective, the supernatural is normal life. So the supernatural doesn't respond or cannot be reasoned with human logic. The supernatural cannot be explained in natural terms using natural reason. You can't naturally reason the supernatural. You need a higher intellect, a higher superior intellect 
to decode the cryptic sacred mysteries of God's supernatural work. The supernatural is reality. It's not magic, it's not superstition, it's not fantasy or fairy tale, it's not spiritual hype. They say, oh, people in the supernatural are so hyped up. You could call I'm hyped up. You could claim that I'm hyped up. It's because I'm supernatural. Amen. I can't help myself. Amen. When God touches you, you become supernatural. You become moved by supernatural. Because the supernatural is not fiction, church. The supernatural is not imagined. God does not create, create illusions or mysticism. God's creativity is supernatural and God purposed for man to carry the supernatural design for greater miraculous exploits and mightier works. The question is, do you want it? Amen. Amen. We have to understand how to walk and be activated in the supernatural and we're going to do that today before we finish. Amen. So the supernatural is the realm of no limits. There's no limits. God cannot be confined or restricted to natural limits because eternity is infinite. Amen? Amen. So, what is the delay? What's the delay? Why, why have you been delayed? What's the delay? This powerless church. Yeah. There are ramifications for being powerless in a powerless church. So what a replacement substitute for the supernatural? When the supernatural is absent, it's replaced by the manifestation of Antichrist. A powerless church, as I have said before, is a seeker friendly non-compromising church. The Word of God says that in the King James 2000 version, it says this, it says, He never has my commandments, His Word, and keeps them. He it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. Amen. And I will love him and will manifest Amen. myself Amen. to him. Amen. Amen. A religion substitutes God's power and love by contradicting God's commandments and laws. You will find religion will contradict the Word of God. It will implement a design which brings the word into contention and conflict with God's word. And the powerless church has an Ahab's Jezebel spirit mentality. They are married in a marriage which exploits a non-assertive and decisive Eastern church. You'll find that China church will bow down to legalism. They'll submit to legal authority of other dimensions, the natural dimension. So a powerless church is a church of religion. A traditional legalistic dead institution. Dead churches are filled with religious pagans. Mm. You may say that's a bit harsh, but pagans is another word for religious people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want a pagan religion? You want a pagan experience? Are you questioning, are you pleading with God for a pagan experience? Mm. Or do you want the undiluted form of supernatural power? Mm. A powerless church is bound to a system of formulas, concepts, theories and principles. The world has principles. Millionaires and businessmen have principles. You can have all the world's principles but have no power. Amen. The secret brand church is bound to a system of moral law. Ideas and doctrinal traditions that lead to dead mm. institutions and dead religions. So powerless churches mm. impose heavy sanctions for non-compliance. If you don't comply to the supernatural, then what happens? Mm. You will pay the price. Mm. Christian legalistic church will say, this is how it is done. Do it this way. But we don't want any supernatural evidence of the fruit. We'll mm. take the seed, but the seed must not be buried. Mm. We want God on the terms of my own imposition. Mm. I want God to move within the parameters and the limits of my own expectation, my own dimensions. God, you can move so far, but don't move any further. Mm. I walked into a church one day and they said, please, pastor, don't pray for people because we don't want people piling up on the floor and blocking the pathway to the doorway so people can go to the oh, lounge room. I said, well, I'm sorry, but I think I'm in the wrong church. They said, it doesn't look good for people when, come, when they come through the door, when they see bodies laying on the floor under the power of God, the power of the majesty of God coursing through their bodies. It's not a very good uh, advertisement for the supernatural, they say, because they don't want to see people com convulsing under the supernatural because it's blocking the doorway. Excuse me! 
Do you want a supernatural church? Yes. yes. Let me tell you, if you want a supernatural church, get ready for dirty floors. Amen. <laughs> get ready for people to line up. Yes. Body upon body. Because God does, God's going to upturn your theology. Amen. Because God is not concerned about the logistics of your human behavior. Your human preferences. He wants church at this level. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me finish this with saying this. I said that for the last 10 minutes, but my question to you is this. Have you allowed the secret friendly church mentality to hijack the supernatural in your church? No. To kidnap you, to hold you to eggs. Have you allowed the church to deny the power of the finished work of the cross. They preach Christ crucified, but they deny the, deny the power of the blood of the Are you that kind of church? My question to you is this. Are you a powerless church or a power church? Power, power church. church. Know this, that God never purposed for you not to demonstrate the word of the power. Amen. Amen. He said, I give you all power all authority. Amen. In other words, my power I give to you. My authority I give to you. And here we are on our worship teams and our ministries and on our altar places dealing with demons like they are long lost buddies. Yes. <laughs> long lost friends. You know, we're not here to entertain demons. Yes. We're not here to go and invite demons for milk and cookies and a cup of tea after the service. Yeah. We're here to get rid of them and cast them out. Amen. 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 So if you are a powerless church, you better cast some demons out, or I will. Amen. If you want to be a powerful church, I'm, tomorrow I'll deal with the, the leading and the guidelines to transitioning into being a powerful church, mm -hmm. not a powerless church. Yeah. So now that we've established the foundation of what a powerless church is, I'm sure that you don't want to identify with a powerless church. Mm -hmm. You want a powerful church. Yes. You've been crying for it. You've yes. been interceding for it. Yeah. You've been petitioning <coughs> God for it. Now heaven is answering you. Heaven's going to invade this dimension. Amen. And let Amen. me tell you, be expecting an invasion of heaven, a celestial invasion in the terrestrial affairs of man. Amen. Amen. God loves interrupting people. God loves disruptions. Because when you're comfortable, you are not moving anywhere quickly. If you're, not com if you're comfortable, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> because if the devil's not tormenting you and afflicting you and, and fighting and wrestling with you, then you're doing something that pleases Satan and not pleasing God. Adopt the supernatural. Take and apprehend the supernatural. Yes. And let God transition you through His grace into His favour. Amen. And receive the yes. benefits as a benefactor of eternal reward. And that is to see the supernatural come in answer to your petitions and your cry. Jesus. Get down on your knees and pray to God and say, God, I'm not leaving this place until I sight the revelation of the supernatural. I'm not leaving this house until I get a revelation of the supernatural for my life. I'm not leaving this dimension and this natural realm until I hear from your voice. Amen. I hear you speak. Amen. 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 Because I'm so hungry. Yes. I just want to see your glory. Yes. I'm hungry, Lord. I just want to see your glory. I'm not satisfied, Lord. I want to see your glory. I'm thirsting. My lips are parched. My tongue is parched. Yes. I'm burning from want of, want of water to, to water and to baptize the arid acreage of my parched spiritual land. Amen. I am desperate yes. for an encounter. Yes. Amen. Is that your cry? Yes. Are you truly hungry 
because if you are, you will be called to pay the price. Amen. Supernatural doesn't come cheap. Yeah. Supernatural comes at a cost. Your commission, your sacrifice, and your obedience. Nothing else will suffice. You must pay the cost. And if your church is, and this church intercross, really seek the supernatural. You will, without any negotiation or afterthought, submit to the processes of refinement and purification. Amen. Twelve months of beauty treatments Amen. under the Egyptian rigors of a brace of rubbing of perfumes and oil into the skin of a lady that sought the favor of a king. Amen. One night, but she inherited a royal kingdom. It was worth it. She changed this, the history of Israel and gave birth to the lineage of the generation that gave and brought our King, our Lord, into this world. Amen. One night with the King yeah. is all it requires to transform your nation. <coughs> Amen. Your churches, your homes, your marriages, are you ready for it? Yes. yes. I'm just wondering if I can have a question. That song that we just sung before, that beautiful song that we just sung, the highs of the goodness. Yeah, that uh, old glory and as, as together as one.